Hey everyone, this is CU Tech Dude, and this is the Red Hydrogen One. This phone is two years old now, but I wanted to let you know if it's still worth your time and money to pick it up in 2020. Well, you can't just go buy this phone new, and even if you could, the launch price of this phone was $1,300. I found it for $150 secondhand on eBay, which is about one-tenth of the original price. Just going to show you how much Red overpriced this phone from the beginning, but what can you expect from Red? They have a very loyal fan base that'll buy mostly anything they release, so I don't blame them for releasing it at a high price point. This is the 128 gigabyte version of this phone, but it also launched in a 256 gigabyte version with the titanium build. And build quality most definitely be polarizing on this phone. It has a very unique industrial design made of metal and carbon fiber, which I kind of like. It's also heavy and hard to use one-handed. I don't hate the design, but I do think most newer phones are too fragile, and that's why I kind of like this design. But there definitely are some downsides to using this kind of build. For example, one-handed operation is just really hard just because the corners are so big and the bezels are so big, it's hard to do everything one-handed without dropping it. This phone was originally launched on AT&T and Verizon, and even though I bought it unlocked and have been using it on T-Mobile, it won't have all the bands for every carrier. For example, it's missing band 71 for T-Mobile, so check carrier compatibility first if you do pick one up. It's also missing Wi-Fi calling uh, for T-Mobile, which is disappointing. The Red Hydrogen has a 5.7-inch 1440p IPS LCD display, which can also show 3D content, which Red calls 4View but more on that later. The screen, in my opinion, looks pretty good for the most part. However, if you look closely at it, which I tried to get on camera, there's kind of a screen door effect, uh, which looks pixelated due to the 3D hardware layer in this phone. I honestly don't notice it much, and it's not a deal breaker in my opinion. Watching videos, playing games, and most everything else looks great on the display. Colors pop and it gets plenty bright for outdoor use. The only cons I really have on the display is that viewing angles aren't great in my opinion. And black levels also are not great. Uh, when you're watching movies and stuff, you can definitely notice that the black levels aren't great. This phone has dual 8 megapixel front cameras. The dual part is so it can take 3D videos and photos. This phone also has micro SD card support, which doubles as the SIM card slot. Due to the metallic build of this phone, there is no wireless charging, unfortunately. Especially considering this uh, price point, you'd expect it to launch with that. But I understand you can't really wireless charge over metal design, but it is disappointing. Thankfully, it does have a fast charging via the USB-C port, and it has a huge 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which I absolutely love the battery life on this phone, guys. It lasts me about two days with uh, pretty heavy usage, so I can take it off the charger for about 48 hours later, put it back on with about 20-30% left. And that's with like six to seven hours screen on time, so it's got a really good battery in, in my opinion. The fingerprint sensor on this phone is built into the side, and it doubles as the power button. And unfortunately, you can't just put your finger on it. You have to actually press um, to unlock, and it recognizes your fingerprint at the same time. So you just press down. Not a big deal. It's kind of annoying at first, but once I get used to it, it really just feels as fast as ever. I'm glad they included the side fingerprint sensor because I really don't like the in-screen fingerprint sensors. So kudos works well in my opinion although i have read that there is a pretty high failure rate of these fingerprint sensors so your miles may vary on that the volume rockers on the opposite side of the phone and they're well spaced out they're pretty smooth and uh, very clicky and it's kind of hard to tell them apart they do have a plus and minus sign etched into them but honestly it's hard to tell the difference when you're just doing it quickly and on the top of this phone is wait for it a headphone jack that's right red did include the one thing that everybody loves um and people keep taking it out for some reason, and that's the headphone jack. I'm very glad they added that because I love having the choice for wired headphones. On the other side of the phone, you do have a dedicated shutter button, which is nice. If you hold it down, it'll take you to the camera most of the time. <laughs> I've had hit or miss uh, situations of this. Right now, it's not going to. Normally, if you hold it down, though, it'll take you to the camera, but not in this situation. And the huge bezels around the screen house the loudspeakers. They're front firing, which is awesome. And they do a pretty good job, in my opinion. I've never missed notifications due to them not being loud enough, and they will fill a room in a pinch with sound, although the sound is a little tinny in my opinion, it could be better, uh, but overall it gets very loud and does a good job. Watching videos on YouTube and playing that movies sound pretty decent, although I do prefer to use the headphone jack. And Red did add uh, this setting, which is 3D audio, which you can use when you have headphones or just from playing system audio, and um, it does okay. I, I'll leave it disabled because I don't really like the sound effect, but if you do have this phone, you can try it yourself and see if you like it or not. On the back of this phone, you have that nice red logo right there, and you have some useless pogo pins. <laughs> I say useless because Red promised that they'd expand this with some uh, Moto Mod type modules, but they killed support for this phone, so those will not ever be coming out, unfortunately. They promised a cool battery pack module, 
They also promised a better camera module, and they also promised that you could use the red hydrogen one as like a display for your red cinema camera if you had one. So pretty disappointing that they killed that support, especially if you paid the full retail price of this, which I'm glad I didn't. Um, but that would have been <laughs> made me really mad if they just killed the support without supporting that. So uh, on the back, you also have the dual 12 megapixel cameras. The dual part here, again, is only for 3D pictures and videos. It'll act like just one camera in all other situations. And in my opinion, you can and should install the Gcam uh, app for this phone. It adds a much needed night mode and also a better portrait mode in my opinion. Um, so definitely install that. You can use the portrait mode on the front and back. Hey guys, what's up? Portrait mode, you. Yeah. Um, so definitely install that. I use the stock camera for uh, everything else, for video and um, 3D, 3D content, which I don't use very much, but I do use this for video. But definitely use the Gcam for pictures. The video on the front facing camera also looks pretty good in decent lighting conditions and it can go up to 4K 30 frames per second. How does the microphone sound? Let me know. In my opinion, the back camera is similar to the front facing camera in that it'll take pretty good pictures and videos and good lighting, but at nighttime it does suffer due to the lack of OIS. Overall though, it does pretty good and it does record up to 4K at 30 frames per second just like the front facing camera. When you take 3D pictures and videos of this phone, you can only view the 3D content on the red phone, but thankfully it does save a 2D version of the video or photo so you can share it like normal. And the 3D content on this phone is hit or miss on how good it is. I'll give you an example. It does include some uh, stock 3D photos that are actually pretty cool in my opinion, and they do show the functionality of this 3D screen. But you can kind of see when I'm talking about the pixelated layer, um, it doesn't show up that way in real life. It actually looks 3D to me. but. On camera, that's what you'll see is that pixelated kind of uh, image. But if done correctly, like I said, this 3D content looks pretty cool and it'll definitely pop out at you. It reminds me of the Nintendo 3DS, although I think this is a quite a bit better. And you can share 3D pics and videos that you, actually just 3D pics that you take using the Hollow Pics app, which is kind of a social media app for uh, 3D content that people can post. Although the user base on this is pretty small, as you'd imagine. Um, it's just people that have red phones. But it is neat seeing what other people post, and some of this stuff looks really cool in my opinion. And it just shows the 3D functionality of this camera pretty well. But besides that, you can't really get any other 3D content on this phone anymore. Uh, Red disabled their Hydrogen Network app, which housed all their uh, Hollywood videos that had 3D content. Like I, I think Wonder Woman was on there and some other ones, but unfortunately that's gone. They shut that down. <laughs> they killed support for it, which is disappointing. You can put um, some side-by-side -side 3D files that you obtain um, on this phone and watch them in normal 3D, which looks kind of cool. But like I said, it, it's hit or miss on how cool it really is. I don't personally like watching these too long because it hurts hurts my eyes and my, it gives me a little headache, but it does look pretty neat when done correctly. But the good news is this uh, 3D in this phone is totally optional and you never have to use it. It's just a little gimmick that can be pretty cool and can be a neat little party trick. Um, but like I said, 2D if you use it as 2D mode like any other phone, it works just fine. So that's not too bad to have that little gimmick if you want to use it. Now this phone has a Snapdragon 835 processor with 6 gigs of RAM. The Snapdragon 835 processor is still pretty good, and I prefer it to most of the MediaTek processors they put in other budget phones. And yes, I'm considering this a budget phone now because it's so cheap. It still feels very snappy in day-to-day -day use, and it can handle intensive gaming like Call of Duty Mobile at high settings just fine. I do wish it launched with a Snapdragon 845 processor since it came out around the same time that that processor was being used in all other flagships, but it is what it is. The software on this phone is disappointingly still running Android 8.1 and it will never be upgraded, unfortunately. If it was upgraded to Android 10 or 11, um, then I'd be like, yeah, this phone is rock. It still rocks, but unfortunately it's Android 8.1 and it's stuck that way. Um, there's no custom ROM support, <laughs> which would be at least a little bit of a nice thing to have, but yeah, it's Android 8.1 for now and eternity. I've had a few issues with random reboots, especially when using VPN, but besides that, it's not very consistent um, as far as bugs. That's the only bug I've really found. And the software is pretty stock Android with the Google Now feed on the red launcher that comes default and um, just has a few other minor tweaks to it, like that 3D audio I mentioned earlier and the few Leia player apps in Leia Loft. This Leia player is going to be your uh, default gallery for any kind of 3D videos or photos you take. And the Leia Loft is an app store um, that has 3D apps that you can use on this phone. It has some games on there, but unfortunately a lot of this stuff, the support for it's going to run out soon, so not even worth really mentioning. But the games that do come on there, the 3D games and apps, are pretty neat. Uh, like I'll give you a little example.
And as I launch this game, uh, this device is no longer supported, so that's what I'm talking about. So unfortunately, yeah, disappointing. Uh, there's going to kill support for this phone. 3D's, this phone's 3D capabilities? Completely. So that stinks. So overall, is the Red Hydrogen 1 still worth buying in 2020? Performance-wise, yeah, this phone still feels plenty fast and um, have no real complaints about day-to-day -day use. But for software and support-wise, heck no. Uh, with this phone being stuck at Android 8.1 with no custom ROM support, no support of any kind, and, and they're killing all the features that made the 3D actually work, I would say definitely pass and get a phone that's still being supported. Like if you haven't checked out my LG G8 in 2020 review, uh, that's a good previous year flagship that's still being supported. Um, and that I'd recommend that phone way more than this phone, even though it's a little bit higher priced. But this phone is one of the few phones that can support 3D content. Um, it can still make uh, 3D content. So if you really want to be able to watch or create 3D content, you really don't have many choices. Now, this is one of the few phones you can get to do that. There are a few more from um, a company called Rocket, but they're more budget phones. They actually are budget phones. This launched as a premium phone. But um, I'd recommend this over probably one of those Rocket phones, in my opinion. Anyways, guys, that's my opinion of the Red Hydrogen 1 in 2020. Hope you liked it. Take care and have a good one, friends. See you next time.